Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So um, I'm doing another video here where I'm looking at uh, an example from history, uh, taken in this instance from More Swordsman of the British Empire by D.A. Kinsley, uh, which I contributed an introduction to and I'll put the link to below this video. And it's really uh, picking on a topic which I actually haven't really mentioned much in previous videos, but it's about resolution, that is um, uh, determination to uh, succeed. Okay, and it's, it's very simple, it's just a little example from history which shows that uh, sometimes what is actually critical in, in a combat that actually you know, occurred in history and, and combats that still occur, um, where determination and discipline and morale of a force is incredibly important. Okay, um, and so this is this is an account from 1867, and it involves a British ship that's sailing to um, Hong Kong, and it gets attacked by pirates. Now, most of you will think of pirates as being something that's probably more in the 16th and 17th centuries, uh, perhaps into the 18th centuries as well, but. In actual fact, in the 19th century, there was still lots of piracy about, and actually, I'm sure lots of you realise there's still lots of piracy today. Obviously, it's mostly you know off the coast of Somalia with with uh, rubber dinghies and AK-47s and RPGs nowadays. Um, however, in the 19th century, there was actually a lot of piracy still, and it's an interesting, um, relatively understudied subject. Um, that even you know civilian yachts that were sailing in parts of you know the Indian Ocean or, or anywhere around kind of um, various parts of Asia around near near Thailand and uh, off the coast of China, anywhere around Japan, those kind of areas, there were lots and lots of uh, little uh, pirate boats going around looking for for easy pickings essentially. And in actual fact, lots of private yachts. Um, you imagine a yacht with a crew of uh, you know, ten guys or something like that. They actually carried uh, guns and cutlasses and boarding pikes in the 19th century because it was a very realistic threat that they might get attacked at some point by uh, by someone. And obviously, it was st still in parts of the you know the Caribbean and off the coast of America. It still happened as well, but it was particularly known to be a risk. It, Round, round about China and the Far East, you know, um, Thailand and the sort of Java and these sort of areas. Okay, so anyway, this is one such account, um, and uh, it's taken from Coburn's United Service magazine of uh, July 1867, um, and so it goes on. I won't start at the very beginning because it's quite a long, a long account, but it comes in. Scarcely had our brave fellows discharged their firearms and seized their cutlasses then they found themselves face to face with the horde of Tartars, when they say Tartars they actually mean Chinese I think in this instance, um, who had succeeded in escaping the fire of our muskets. They had approached on small boats and they had essentially uh, shot off one volley uh, from the muskets and that was all they had time to do and that's an interesting point of course because at this time these are muzzle loading muskets for the, uh, for the most part. Breech loaders had obviously started to come in in the 1860s but across a lot of the world uh, and amongst many armed forces muzzle loaders were still predominant therefore relatively slow rate of fire. Um, the struggle that ensued was short but it was very severe. The pirates as they tried to clamber up the sides were met by the long boarding pikes. Long uh, boarding pike is a pike is essentially a spear. While those that gained the deck were opposed by the sailor's favourite arm, the cutlass. Um, it was evident that only a few of the enemy and those, the leaders, who fought with desperation, had any stomach for the fight. They had not bargained for such a resistance, and many of them declined to back up their chiefs. In other words, they, they, didn't, uh, they did, literally didn't back up the chiefs. They probably didn't really advance and put the pressure on the enemy that they, that they needed to do. They were lacking in uh, morale, determination, and perhaps discipline. They're pirates. Um, had they fought with the tenacity of these leaders, it must have gone hard for us. But as it was, the few of them who succeeded in planting a foot on the, on the bark's deck were almost instantly cut to pieces. Many made a half-hearted attempt to board, but they were easily repulsed, and we were left victors of the conflict. Short as it had been, seven of our men were wounded, th um, three of them dangerously, but none were killed. All of those injuries, um, all of those injured, subsequently recovered, and we had great cause to congratulate ourselves on the result of the affair. 
We arrived at Hong Kong on the fifth day after repulsing the pirates. So there we go, 1867, a pirate attack. Uh, it, it was successful for the defenders. They fired one volley into the, uh, into the rowing boats as they came up. And clearly the, the real theme here is, despite the fact that they fought well, the real reason why they succeeded was because the enemy, the pirates, weren't disciplined, weren't determined, and clearly the leaders were very determined, probably because uh, they had the most interest in it succeeding. Um, and this is really a theme you have to bear in mind when you're ever looking at conflict. It could be between two people, could be a duel, or it could be between a group of people as here, or it could be a full-scale battle. Determination and discipline often decides the outcome of a conflict, not always the weapons they use or even the tactics they use. So that's really all, all I want to say in this video. Determination, discipline, drive, um, you know, driving forwards, taking ground, very, very important. And so it's to do with mindset. And it's, even if it's in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's often to do with mindset who wins, not necessarily the weapons involved. Cheers, guys.